and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube uh, for some Elemental Arcbow. All right, so we're going to be playing this deck again. We played this deck like four or five days ago, and it didn't work out too well for us. It was a little too slow, you know, like relying on uh, Fires of Invention, casting multiple cards. The thing that I'm doing here to speed it up a little bit is adding in some growth spirals because last time that we played it, that was our that was like our curve here, and it was it was just a little too slow. So you know, hopefully with some some growth spirals, we can get there a little faster. So we got 26 lands, like the goal of our deck. You know, like we got 26 lands. We're trying to go grazer or grow spiral. You know, leafkin trying to get these out early and get to uh, fires of invention where we can cast multiple spells a turn. And, you know, we can cast two spells a turn, and we can just cast anything that has CMC less than or equal to the number of lands we control. We don't have to pay the mana cost. And so then we're focused on getting to five mana with fires and playing two five drops a turn with all of these cavaliers. Um, since, since we don't have to use our mana, then we just have our five lands, right? And we don't have, um, like, we, we don't have anything to do with our five lands. So we have Vivian's Arcbow that we can also use to be able to, um, you know, we can activate Arcbow and get a third at five drops. So we can, you know, we can get, with the help of Arcbow and Fires of Invention, we can get three five drops in um, in a single turn. And so that's really what our deck's about. And, um, you know, then just all of our Cavalier synergies. You know, we're going with two Cavalier of Dawns because these can just destroy any non-land permanents you know like this can take down our opponents uh planeswalkers you know like this can destroy oko so oko doesn't turn our all of our cavaliers into three threes kind of thing one cavalier of night against you know aggro decks you can sacrifice the grazer you have a four or five life linker um you know that kind of thing the cavalier of gales is our most important one it's, as you can tell we got three of them because it it's you know draw three put two back it can help keep the hand fill filled because you know we want to be able to cast multiple cards a turn and activate arc bow so cavalier of gales does a good job of that um you know flame for haste and a lot of damage and your rock get the double triggers on everything i don't have green cavalier because i'm worried about milling out with green cavalier um so we don't have that but here we go let's uh let's try some elemental arc bow Hopefully it does pretty well. We're going to play some matches in ranked. We're going to play five matches with the deck. Are you have find fires? You just, you just, I mean, you just have to draw fires of invention. You know, you have like the risen reefs that help dig through your deck and everything too. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> turn, yeah, turn Oko into the three three itself. Turn Oko into the three three. Say, how do you like it, being a 3-3? Three, three? Hmm. This hand's good, but we don't have lands. Like, that's why I'm playing 26 lands with this deck, because this deck needs to hit its land, its land drops. I think I have to mulligan, though, because I don't actually have, like, any cards that do anything. All right, so this is good. Let's So we're not putting back fires cuz there's no reason to keep Cavalier of Night if we don't have fires, right? So it's either put back Cavalier of Night or it's just put back one of the forests. Which that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put back a forest. With us having like the 26 lands, I think we can get a couple more lands especially with Risen Reef here. Keep this arc, arc bow. Okay, so you've been playing a variation of a Yara and Footlight Fiend has been amazing, especially against Cavalcade. Yeah, Footlight Fiend is is amazing against Cavalcade. Um, but awesome, yeah. Glad glad to hear you're enjoying the deck over there, Moxie. So I guess this castle is going to come into play tapped. So ideally, we'll draw a land here be able to go land fires arc bow like untapped land ideally 
even if we don't, it's not the end of the world. You know, like we can just play like our tap land arc bow, and then the next turn, if we draw a land, our next turn, if we draw a land, we can go fires cavalier or fires your rock. But now we need our we need our twenty six land deck to hit this. Hit one more land drop for us. Mm, that's unfortunate. Well, that's a good turn. All right, come on, draw land. Go fires your rock. Land. <laughs> no. Uh. Okay, now this next turn, if we draw a land, you know, can go like we can activate Arcbo and your rock and cavalier. We can have a you know, our best possible turn if we draw an untapped land here. We're obviously going to be at a very low life total, though. So if I, I can shock to activate Arcbow... I didn't necessarily mean to do that, but oh well. So the obviously the, the problem with shocking is that they have another bone crusher giant I die. Alright, guess I shouldn't have shocked. Couldn't, couldn't quite stabilize. I know, I had to say it. And I had to put that land down to the bottom. <clears throat> so we missed that crucial land drop. So I'm going to play another Cavalier of Night over Cavalier of Flame. Oko is for aggro. And we're playing against aggro, so we'll play Oko. Um... Arcbo can be a little slow here. Maybe Cavalier of Dawn isn't spectacular, turning like their other creatures just back into 3 threes. All right, here we go. Seem like their creatures are bigger than Flame Sweep. Now, obviously, like, like right away, if we can get like Pelt Collectors, but, you know, I think for the most part... Like, if they're just playing, like, regular Gruul stuff, I'd think Flame Sweep may be a little slow. Hey, snipers. Did 
down, 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 down. Here's I don't get fined. Game number two. All right, I like it. We'll go, you know, turn one grazer with, with temple. Look for untapped land where we can risen reef next turn. Not on tap land. On tap land. All right, well, that went pretty well. I mean, I, obviously, I would like to spark double the Risen Reef. We'll see if my opponent has. Removal for it, though. You know, if they just pass turn, I'm not going to do that. And they're looking at it. Will they just play a Paradise Druid? I have an O3, so there's no no reason to attack with zero power. Yeah, so it, it just it does zero damage with attacking, so don't need to attack with that. Yeah, basically, because this is, I guess because this is Hawkeye's room, the dogs don't usually come in here, but. Um... But yeah, I can I can always go grab puppy. El kite. El kite. Gross. Let's cry that to the bottom. I guess I like these things are going to die anyway. These cavaliers. I should have waited on that on casting that growth spiral. Cause if they die they then you shuffle and everything. Like they're gonna have to die like this next turn. Or my opponent dies, like they're gonna have to block. Now I wanted more gas and like you know, like this this cavalier outclasses the Hellkite. But I guess I could have gone the... So if I go the other Cavalier, make it a 5-7, and turn Hellkite into a 3-3. Three, three. But then, like, the two kind of team up on it. I don't know. I liked the the draw. I liked the draw three. Put two back.
They didn't do any other blocking. They didn't block with Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. Hmm. I'm running back. <laughs> yeah, my phone was so excited for that number complete play. They forgot. Because, yeah, I guess Embercleave does have flash. You can flash it in and block. That was my first time I've seen somebody um, flash in an Embercleave to block. Yeah, just you can replace Cavalier Dawn with one of the other Cavaliers. Um, maybe Cavalier of Night. So I'm at four lands right now. I'm just going to put it to the bottom because I, I want land. That'll do. Next turn... Next turn, I'm just playing Arc Bow, Temple of Epiphany, and then I'm going to be using like the five mana for Arc Bow. I guess I may be casting Oko. All right, they found green mana. We'll ditch the Cavalier of Night. We can't really cast that thing anyway. So they got... They have Embercleave available here. Is that the plan? Nope. Not going haste. this growth spiral. I'm not going to cast that thing. <clears throat> Good call. Yeah, Oketra is a good replacement there, too. Good call there, Sothian. That's a good replacement for Cavalier. Um, are there any target creature can't attack cards in the format right now? Um, there's, like, enchantments that you can put on a creature to make it not be able to attack. 
there's yeah like like sky tether pacifism stuff like that You know, we get to freely block with the Cavalier of Night, because even if it dies, we get the Risen Reef back. Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. I'll shear the wool from your eyes and spin you clarity. It's not for you. Trust me. Let's broaden your existence. See, this is what this is some power here, <laughs> and we still get an instant speed creature. Okay, well that thing's a problem. We're gonna have to oko that thing, but I, I may have to attack with Cavalier of Night, or we may just hit one of our blue Cavaliers here. Blue Cavalier. All right, no blue cavalier, but we hit a black cavalier. <laughs> double cavalier, double oko. This deck is sweet. <laughs> so yeah, like that turn, we, we played two okos and instant speed cavalier that turn that's pretty sweet <laughs> um i think that the simic semi flash is a better deck lock um the esper alayla esper you know you may have some more fun with it can do some crazy stuff but if you're looking for a deck like if you're looking for which deck is going to put up more wins the simic semi flash deck is a, is a better deck But if you think you'll enjoy playing the Alayla deck better, you know, they can go that way. Keep. I do need five land, but we'll probably find a, a fifth land. I could have kept that and just gone like that land arc bow. My thoughts on the current metagame? Um, not, it's not great, to be honest. But it's... Standard's been in a lot worse spot before than what it is. It's not, it's not terrible. But it could be better. Um, things that would have, like, Throne of Eldraine could have made it a whole lot better with, like, three things. Like, if they would have not printed, or sorry, if they would have printed, like, you know, two, three, four cards, something like, at least two cards that just dealt with Field of the Dead. Um, like, they could have done that. You know, like just like land, you know, random land hate cards, like kind of like Blood Sun kind of thing. I'm not sure why there wasn't anything to that extent, but that would have made the the format better. It was a pretty obvious, like you know, like we all knew that Field of the Dead was going to be a problem after rotation if they printed nothing, and for some reason they didn't print anything in Throne of Eldraine. Like it was not, it's not like it's not like hindsight is 2020. Like that was a something that we were all saying at the time um so that's that's one thing and then if if oko just was not as strong like it's printing a card like oko that just makes it it's just too it's just too good like it's it's a card that 
it really forces, you know, like keeps you from playing lots of other stuff because it's too good. So they did not print Oko so powerful. And then, um, last thing is honestly, I, I kind of wish Questing Beast wasn't as powerful as it was either. So I feel like those, those three things that they could have done in Throne of Eldraine could have made the metagame a lot better. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms. I think a little merriment is in order. Wow. That was not good. <laughs> the next card. I'm looking for the white cavalier here to try to kill Oko. No luck. Yeah, Risen Reef is just fine in the metagame. The problem is the the other elemental creatures that go along with Risen Reef, especially the five mana ones like the Cavaliers and stuff, like the you know, what this deck's kind of built around. These are not very well positioned. Like they're not very well positioned in the metagame because of this card. Like this card makes makes you playing five mana creatures just laughable whenever you can just turn them into three threes. This card is just too strong. Your new look is enchanting. But you know, <laughs> want to do different things. In standard, we we just lose to Oko. It's just how life is. One damage. <clears throat> of course, we're looking for the white cavalier to kill Oko. <laughs> Hawkeye is. You can see him back there. He's taking a nap on the couch. That's where he's at. Yeah, so we're gonna bring in the other the other Cavalier of Dawn, the Agent of Treachery. I don't think I want my own Oko. I'm not sure if we need the other black cavalier. Maybe we want the other black cavalier instead of Yurok. This is a pretty poor Yurok matchup.
but Agent of Treachery makes you rock a whole lot better. Yeah, yeah, Puppy is just in the living room. Or, you know, like, the other part of the house, you know, like, the... Yeah, I have two dogs, Puppy and Harvey. They don't, uh... They don't get to come into this room, because... Um, Hawkeye's kind of scared of them. <laughs> Win a game with Happily Ever After. That is a good challenge right there. So, unfortunately, you know, like, I, I can go turn three fires off of the Leafkin Druid, but then, you know, we have three lands into play, so we don't get to, like, go fires plus something else. But I could still just drop fires on turn three and then turn, turn four, play this temple, and we have four mana, and then I can go Omnath, Spark Double... I could, of course, just play Omnath first. So it kind of depends on what my opponent does here. Oh, yeah, drawing Risen Reef would be ideal. So I think my opponent's just sitting back on Disdainful Stroke. Or I guess it's Ether Gust. Sure. Kill my O3. Slow me down a turn. I was already kind of slowed down anyway. The brambles of truth twirl and curl. Choking out. Welcome to the feast. Why do you cross me? <laughs> Play an adventure deck, but you have to narrate all your plays like you're reading a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, Starnet, I put this deck together. Yeah, Puppy's pretty camera shy. I go grab Puppy. Oh, my opponent is sitting sitting here. How to decide how to beat me with this Oko? Oh dear. So will the spark double will the spark double copy this elk or will it be actual omnath? What do y'all think? It copies the base card, so it'll be... Ooh, I feel so alive. Behind me. Fear your truth. All right, we got an Omnath. So copies the base card. Puppy. Yeah, because the other Omnath is just an elk, so it's not an elemental. 
It only does one damage. Soultraz of the Twitch Prime sub. Puppy hype. Puppy hype. The land fights the, for us. The banner picture on, on my Patreon is Puppy here running right next right next to my road. She's all happy. Thanks, Soultraz. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. So I think that Oko is going to turn this Cavalier into a 3-3, the Cavalier of Gales. Voyata. Voyata. Voyata? Voyata? Names are hard to pronounce. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for the, the support there. And Puppy says thank you. Thank you, puppy. Thank you, pup. Well, darn. <laughs> These cards are really good. Oka, Oko, Nissa, Krasis. Definitely is definitely gonna be the best deck. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. If there's no field of the dead. What if they just banned Hydroid Krasis? Cut down on Field of the Dead's power and on this deck's power. Crisis on its own is not bad. Are you kidding me? You get to draw so many cards. It's so many cards. Yeah, what would so what would happen if there's no Hydroid Crisis? <laughs> yeah, the thing is they they just keep on printing such great uh ramp. Every tale about me you can't just get rid of all the ramp spells. Nonsense. I think a little merriment is in order. Yeah, it's definitely possible to get to diamond with a mono red aggro deck. Yeah, absolutely. Mono Red's been putting up some pretty good results recently. Your new look is enchanting.
yeah, the one the one card in the format that is that is certainly the best against my deck is this card right here. And so you know, turn two on the play. You know, what am I gonna do here? It's just it's just how it goes. It's just how it goes. But we see, you know, like that's it's the problem with trying to play Cavaliers and, and everything. Like they you know, people are like, oh, well, you think you think elementals are really good. I like guess from last set. Well, let's just print a three mana planeswalker that to change your way. makes all your elementals into uh, very easy to manage cards. Maybe we hit Risen Reef. So they still get another 3-3 here. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, turn Oko into a So we go down to three. Oh, this arc bow over here, they keep on stopping this, saying, do you want to interact? It's like, no, I don't. That was the whole resolve all part. All right, we're kind of doing it, puppy. We're kind of doing it. The brambles of truth twirl and curl, choking out lies. Darn. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. No, no, not really. I 
I can't attack, can I? I grace you with my luck. Well, we're trying over here. We're putting up a, a big time fight after opponent had turn two Oko on the play. Unfortunately, our fight ends here. That second Oko not giving us lifelink anymore. Now they got six attackers. I got five blockers. No, if my opponent no, if my opponent used Oko to make a goose a three three in attack, we were not dead because we had the life link from Yurok. So no, that wouldn't kill us. It's just so hard to play these cavaliers against that guard. Uh we're trying though. We're trying. Hmm. This hand would have been really good if we had green mana, but I don't think I want to risk it. We had the temple, but still. Yeah, maybe I could just go with Spyglass in the sideboard here for Oko. That could be the way to go. Well, I wish I would have put this other fires to the bottom instead of the Spark Double with the Scry. My plan is crystallizing. You didn't help, puppy. Puppy. All right, I'll go put you back, puppy. Here's, she's so shy with the camera, so camera shy. All right, you wanna go back in the other room, puppy? All right. Come on. All right, well, we, <clears throat> we fought hard that last time, but you see what, why life is tough for Cavaliers these days.
<laughs> yeah. We have played against Simic just an absolute ton today. I guess Simic is the, the real popular deck right now. We haven't played against Field of the Dead very much. It's been mostly all, you know, Simic, whether it's Simic or Bant or Teamer. You know, it's just been people, you know, it's just been Oko decks over and over again. All right, 26 land deck. Hit those lands. There we go. Hey, Rochian. Doing really good. Foul Meyer Knight. Put, all right, so Spiral Grazer down at the bottom. <clears throat> I don't have any black mana in the deck. Don't have any white mana in the deck. So our cards aren't actually castable unless we... Um, unless, you know, we draw a Fires of Invention. Plenty of land drops there. And like a, obviously, uh, obviously, fires of invention is just our best draw step. Besides that, you know, like one of our castable cavaliers, like a blue cavalier in particular, would be really nice. Or omnath. So I think I'm supposed to keep the land in hand because of Omnath. You know, we, we could play it, play the land, draw another card. I don't really see the reason to play this Grazer. The reason not to play the Grazer would be if we draw... I just don't really see any reason to play it. <clears throat> if we draw... Um, Arcbow. We want to discard the Grazer to Arcbow. No, this game's not on mobile. With the Arcbow at my side, I can't lose a fight. aim and their claws, you're done. That's the first time that's ever happened with this deck. It's the first time I've, you know, just had like the uncastable cards and never find any way to play them. I haven't had that happen before.
feel like I shouldn't be playing... Maybe we just shouldn't be playing Leaf Kin Druid in this deck. I did, F FLN. I did. Um, yeah, I made all these decks over here today. Except for the, the Orzhov value, that was a, a donation deck that I, that I just tuned. But the rest of them, you know, besides the besides the Demir Mail donation deck, these decks that were playing in ranked were all decks that I put together. Uh, let's see. I, I kind of want to play another Cavalier of Night. I'm just going to play these Veil of Summers, though. I have a couple of Vokos in the board. And then some of our lands. So yeah, we you know, those and then of course the fire. So we don't have we don't have very many um Throne of Eldraine cards in this list. We just need to draw like we did last game. Just draw millions of lands like we did last game. There's twenty six in the deck. Just gotta find a just find a blue one. Get to cast Crow Spiral. I think this is a, it's a better chance that I think I think that's a better chance that like we draw a blue land and draw a couple lands than um you know go to five and have like a real good five card hand. <laughs> Oko should make Risen Reefs. <laughs> Cavalier of Gales is really good, but we need a five mana. Let's say I keep it on top. I draw Cavaliers for turn. I cast Grow Spiral, so I get the next card underneath. Nah, we just can't. I want to keep it because it's it's the way to like fill our hand and be able to keep playing a whole bunch of stuff with Fires of Invention. I can't do it though. Well, I'm really glad we didn't keep it. Elk Lamentals. These were all the spells we needed last game. And this game, we need all the lands we had last game. Magic will do that to you. I just realized, you know, I've been thinking about it here. I think we've only played against four different decks today, right? Yeah, Fires and Veil of Summer aren't a great combo. But haven't we only played against either Field of the Dead, Green Black Adventures, Mono Red, or or like Simic Oko? You know, Simic, you know, splash different colors, you know, but that's it, right? Fifteen matches, and that's that's spent every single match, right? Still couldn't hit a land. I 
Awesome, Clue King, yeah. Glad you enjoyed the Esper Alela. Okay, gonna be trying with Shiver Shimmer Dragon. Yeah, I like Shimmer Dragon quite a bit as a card. It's just, you know, Tezzeret and Ugin are so good also, like as the six mana cards, they're so good. And so it's just hard to justify playing it. Great minions. Loyal. Yeah. <laughs> Good help is easy to find in war. Uh, so we already had a Yurok. Still trying to stabilize. I mean, tough with all these edgewall innkeepers and stuff, though. Our deck is much more powerful when we have when we have Risen Reef. Not having Risen Reef makes life pretty tough. Ideally, we'll hit Omnath here. That's the best hit is Omnath. Yay. Edge Walling Keepers. It's their Risen Reef, you know? Like, like, I have Risen Reef, they have Risen Reef. They have three Risen Reefs in play. Makes their deck a lot better. My, my Risen Reef was killed.
Yeah, one mana Risen Reef. It's a little stronger than three mana Risen Reef. Hmm. Yeah, guys, the Teamer Walkers deck we played earlier. You should check out that deck. A deck with a lot of Planeswalkers. It's a very good one. All right, looks like they've ran out of gas. Yeah, I, it's hard to attack into a potential wrinkle. My Cavalier of Night has lifelink, so they didn't... They didn't attack into it. Sorry, yeah, it's just going to a, a, a later game state. Sorry about the, the lag there. This kind of looks like we're going to be milling out, to be honest.
Well, time to start. Time to start attacking in the air with these cavaliers. For sure. I mean, we're just attack. I mean, we're just gonna be attacking out here. Really. Yeah, because they're going to just start drawing infinite cards. Ugh. That drew them four cards. And get another one. Draws them four cards. Maybe they mill out. They're at 25. Yeah, maybe my opponent mills out. That's a reset. At least my opponent doesn't have... At least my opponent doesn't have all those innkeepers to start keep gaining millions of cards. The Risen Reef obviously is just going to die again, but we get the trigger. Alright, so they don't have all these Edgewall Innkeepers anymore. That was a whole lot of good stuff from my end, though. It's a lot of Cavaliers that died over there. Oh, crap. I can't go Cavalier and Omnath. That was kind of my plan. Yeah, shocking in here. It's not great. Means that we're dead to Masker Girl. From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is beautiful. Well, that was the best case scenario for us. <clears throat> I tried. I tried. Yeah, Masker Girl has Menace, so we don't get to block Masker Girl there. So yeah, one mana, one mana Risen Reef is pretty strong.
Yeah, what if Risen Reef cost one mana? Yeah, yo, this deck could have Great Henge. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly where to fit it. You know, like you said, like maybe sideboard. Um, sorry, something happened and it went up to 1440. Because, yeah, Great Henge, Great Henge would honestly, you know, would, would, would certainly work really well with this deck. Especially like how you don't need your extra mana. Um, even with fires and stuff, like... We got to do some cool stuff with Arcbow this time. We didn't get to use Arcbow nearly as much last time. Arcbow looked pretty good uh, this time playing, um, but it's tough. Like the, it's it's kind of weird that like how good like these Cavaliers are, but like the the new format, like they're just they're pretty underpowered. That's you know that's what it really just kind of comes down to. Um, yeah, Great Henge could could work really well. Um, Maybe like this deck could, maybe we could just not play Leafkin Druid. Maybe the deck could have like a couple Okos, like maybe just zero Leafkin Druid, and then play like, you know, like two Oko, one Great Henge in the main deck instead, maybe. Um. There's a lot of potential here. It's a difficult deck to kind of hash out completely. But still... Um, the five mana Cavaliers just don't seem... They don't seem to be pulling their weight, honestly. Cavalier of Dawn was super impressive. Cavalier of Dawn looked like our best Cavalier because, you know, we, we just got to kill a whole bunch of Planeswalkers with this Cavalier. I feel like I should build Cavalier of Dawn and Charming Prince. I feel like maybe we should put like some of these Cavalier of Dawns in that Orzhov deck we just played. Cavalier of Dawn with Charming Prince kind of thing. But <clears throat> Do I think the God Eternals would have worked better? No. No. No, the God Eternals are kind of worse. Um, what enchantments though? I don't think you don't really need to have that. Like that ability is nice, but I don't even know if you need to have it. Like the the best enchant enchantment to play is like Othakaya, right? Because then you can sacrifice Othakaya and just turn Othakaya into a three three, and then you know like whenever it dies, you can get Othakaya back. But I'm not sure if you really need too much more besides that. You know like the Bolus of Citadel, uh, one that comes to mind, I suppose. Um. But yeah, Othakai would be like the main one there. Archon. Archon could be an option. Yeah, there's there's a lot to do here with this. There's a lot to do here with this. But the, but this deck definitely felt a lot better than last time with the growth spirals in there, but it's still it's still a little on the weak side. It's still Oko is really hard to beat. Um and a lot of those games that we were playing, though, we just we didn't we weren't like having Risen Reef in play. Like this this deck is so much better whenever you can have Risen Reef and then start playing Cavaliers after Risen Reef. And as as we saw there, like that just didn't happen hardly at all for us. Um, but anyway, that's Elemental Lark Bow. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there, and also leave some comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. You know if it's. Uh, you know, what else am I missing here? You know, what else should we, what should we be doing with our elemental arc bow deck as well? And of course I want to give uh, another shout out to the Patreon page, brand new, uh, Patreon page just started it yesterday. Um, $3 a month. If you like my content and like to help support me, I'd really appreciate that. It's less than a, a Twitch sub and I'm going to be putting up written content over there, sideboard guides as well. Um, so, you know, like if you're liking these videos and everything, if you're watching over on YouTube and would like to help support me, please check out the Patreon page. You can find the link down below in the info panel there. All right, but that's it here for Elemental Arcbow. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.